It looks freaking bad ass. What do I know? Apparently this is cool now. Sport. <laughs> this car would do 300 kilometers an hour so easily. What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this POV review by Autotop NL. My name is Max and today you are joining me on a very special day because it is here the new 8 series and we are driving the M850i X-Drive today. So it is sort of a reincarnation of the old 8 series. It's the new flagship, the new halo car of BMW and well it looks pretty freaking insane if you ask me. So we're going to do a walk around show you all the stuff we've got the spec we've got it in then we'll take it for a drive along this road and take it to the autobahn to see what it's like over there um, before we begin don't forget to hit subscribe if you are not a subscriber yet and hit that notification bell to get updates when we upload a new video alrighty so let's start with the way this thing looks because it looks freaking bad ass if you ask me the proportions are just right a very long hood a nice sloping roof and a short thick back and wait it just it just ticks all the boxes looks wise uh, we've got a sunset orange today which is this freaking awesome color it's a sort of a dark orange and we've also got the optional carbon fiber exterior package which means that we've got a lot of very cool carbon fiber like these little things around the air ducts these little winglets uh, we've got a black grill of course and as with pretty much all the new BMWs it has these little fins that open up if the engine needs more cooling and they close so uh, the aerodynamic efficiency increases we've got BMW laser lights very nice super cool black wheels I really like the design of this uh, five double spoke sort of thing in black with Bridgestone Potenza tires and M Sport brakes you can see that because it has blue brake calipers this little side thing uh, carbon fiber mirror caps and this is not part of the carbon fiber exterior package this is another option carbon fiber roof very cool first time ever available on a non M car well of course it's an M performance but it's not a full-blown M car so that's the first time we've got a carbon fiber boot lip spoiler and a huge carbon fiber diffuser or at least an inlay and I mean check out those exhaust pipes in there it is very big M850i logo X drive and these well this is fake uh, this is too but it does look cool I mean oh man this car looks so aggressive and this tail light design is also really beautiful I think really suits the car so if you compare it to the old 8 series which was built from 1989 until 1999 that was much more of a luxury GT coupe and uh, even the 850 uh, which had a V12 you really had to have the 850 CSI if you wanted to have something you know more sporty uh, but this new 8 series replaces the 6 series so I think it should be still you know a big GT coupe but it should also have some sportiness to it and I think it does all right let's check out the engine we've got the N63 4.4 liter V8 by turbo with 530 horsepower 750 newton meters 0 to 100 3.7 seconds top speed 250 kilometers an hour and to that we are going to say boo BMW because this is an M performance you can't get the M drivers package 
which weirdly enough is available on the M760 Li, but it's not available on the M850i. So as you will see later on, this car will do 250 kilometers an hour like it's nothing. So that's a shame. But if you ask me, this has to be the best looking BMW you can get right now. It is stunning. Absolutely nailed it design wise. I mean, it's not like classy or, you know, chic, but it is just so aggressive and badass, especially in this M850i trim. Uh, if you have a regular one, so like an 840D, which is the other one available right now, uh, that is a lot more sleek and less aggressive. If we take a look at the interior, we'll just get this stuff out of the way. You can see that it is a 2 plus 2 big coupe, uh, but you can't really seat for adults. Uh, Martijn was just sitting here and he was, you know, against the roof with his head. So maybe if you have two small children, you know, you could seat them there, but it, it's not like for adults. All right, what else? We've got an M850i logo right here and a carbon core logo, which we recognize from the 7 series. And that's because this car also has the carbon core. They have used a lot of high strength steel, uh, aluminium, magnesium, and carbon fiber reinforced plastic to make this sort of relatively light uh, because it is about 100 kilos lighter than a comparable S-Class Coupe. So that's not bad. It's like 1,890 kilos, something like that, uh, which is not bad for a car of this size. On the interior, we've got this sort of weird stuff, but I kind of like it. I like the look of it, and I like the fact that if you touch it, you can actually feel it. We've got the Clarity Glass upgrade for uh, this, this, and this. So if you don't get that, this is just uh, shiny black, I think. Yeah, it has to be your taste. But it is a, an eye catcher. Uh, this is a new layout altogether. So the new X5 has this, the new 3 Series will have a version of this. The new X7 will have this. And well, it's sort of recognizable BMW, but in a sort of a different layout. Uh, we've got the new iDrive system, iDrive 7. I think we already showed you this in the 3 Series release video. Uh, but it's, you know, it's still iDrive, so it's very, easy to use and you get this cool car in the correct color even. Uh, this is a new design as well so if we start it up you can see that this is actually a little screen uh, for your climate stuff uh, and that's about it. The rest is buttons. This is touch sensitive for your shortcuts and we've got heated and ventilated seats which i would like to have activated and my heated steering wheel i would like to have that as well we've got the new instrument cluster over there 12.3 inch screen so completely digital well i don't really like it to be honest it's not that easy to read this sort of half octagonal whatever it is um, it's not as easy to use as just round dials, like a speedometer. I, I would actually prefer that. I think this is a bit gimmicky and a bit like for the sake of the of looking cool, we'll, we'll get this, but it's not as good to read off. But you know, what do I know? Apparently this is cool now. Uh, at least we still have a regular <laughs> digital one over there and we have also activated the dual thing so for the mile an hour lovers you can also watch with me uh, in your preferred unit 
what else? We've got a lot of leather all around. I mean, this car has been specced to the brim. It is really, really full of options. So we've got super soft leather everywhere. This is actually also heated. So is this. So if you activate your heated seats, these two are activated as well. Uh, a lot of leather. We've got this sort of matte chrome finish, which looks really good. Um, but I do think that, you know, all black leather is a bit boring. I saw some pictures of one with a tan in interior, like a cognac or tartufo, something like that. And I think the contrast really, you know, makes it sexier. Uh, but other than that, I really like this center console. I think it's sort of reminiscent of the 6 series, only a bit bigger and a bit more luxurious feeling. Um, and the seats are really good as well. Uh, you sit nice and low. It's actually, the driving position is really good. The seats are very comfy, still supportive, yeah. It's a good car, this. I actually really like it. All right, well, enough talking. Ah, oh, we've got M striping on the seat belts as well. Uh, let's go. So when you drive this car for the first time, we've got it in comfort mode right now, just in the regular automatic. So we've got an eight speed ZF automatic gearbox. But when you drive this car for the first time, you immediately notice something weird, which is it has the integral active steering. And that means that it has a variable power steering system coupled to four wheel steering. And that means that sometimes it sort of surprises you with how direct it is and how light it is. So when you're driving around on a road like this and you come up to a roundabout, you turn to go on the roundabout and it's suddenly very light and direct and sort of surprises you. So that kind of takes some getting used to, but once you get used to it, it is super nice because the car feels a lot smaller than it actually is and it feels really you know agile although the the weirdness of the four wheel steering is just something that takes a while to get used to all right we'll go to sport plus sport gearbox traction control all the way off we've got x drive so we've got the front wheels to save us which actually it feels a lot like the four wheel drive sport <laughs> in the m5 it is it is like your traction control that that front axle will sort of grab the tarmac and pull you out of the slide which makes it really really nicely controlled and you know it does feel sort of wild enough to be an m sort of m adjacent car but it still still feels very controllable which is really nice. And obviously you can still slide it around and get some big angles. The sound of the V8 is actually really nice as well. I was sort of expecting it to be a little bit less like V80. Uh, there is some sound coming through the speakers, but the sound of the engine, the N63 is more like it's more like the 50i engines than it is similar to an M5 uh, when it comes to sound. It has that sort of dark, barking V8 sound and not so much the UFO taking off sound. So we're at the Autobahn and as I said, one big drawback of this car is that it's limited to 250 kilometers an hour, which every time I say this, there are a lot of comments saying, yeah, well, where else do you need it to be more than 250 kilometers an hour, except on the German unrestricted autobahn? Yes, well, we are at the German unrestricted autobahn and I'm driving an M850i. I just got on, I floored it, and I'm already at 250 kilometers an hour. I mean, that's how quick this car is, and that's the limiter. It's just ridiculous. This car would do 300 kilometers an hour so easily. I mean, it's just, it's just a shame. 
because this car is super super quick as I said 0 to 100 kilometers an hour 3.7 seconds but 100 to 200 we measured it with our draggy at 8.48 seconds which is around the same as a Bentley Continental GT the new one and it's even quicker than a Lamborghini Urus so it is absolutely bonkers fast but limited at 250 km an hour it's a shame I, I don't really understand it at least you know offer it as an option but okay enough about that but what is it like to drive well it is super fast but as it still has to be a GT it's still very comfortable even in Sport Plus uh, this car is not being offered with air suspension like the 7 series uh, this just has regular steel springs and coilovers it is adaptive though so I can choose the different driving modes and the suspension will change accordingly and it will change from more comfortable to more of a sports car but it, it never really becomes uncomfortable so it definitely ticks uh, the box of being a GT and it sort of also ticks the box of being a sports car which like I said at the beginning is something I wanted to find out is this like the old 8 series is this the big sort of GT coupe like relaxed driving with a big engine but it's it, it actually does that very nicely but it's more than that it it actually really is a sports car because if you want it to be it can be quite aggressive and nimble and slidey and just a lot of fun to drive it also has active anti-roll bars which sort of disconnect when you drive in a straight line it has that four-wheel steering it has the adaptive dampers it has so much tech on board to make sure that it feels smaller than it actually is and that reminds me of something the Bentley Continental GT the new one it does the same thing it's a big fast coupe that feels much smaller than it actually is but I wasn't expecting this to be as fast as the Continental GT which it is from 100 to 200 which is totally insane I mean we're at the limiter now so that Bentley would fly by us but it is very 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 impressive but you can't really compare it to a Continental GT can you because it is so much more expensive than this one so what do we compare it to well I I was thinking maybe the Lexus LC 500 with that V8 it's a bit cheaper it's a bit less powerful but it it does sort of share the same philosophy big coupe GT V8 really fast sounds good maybe a Mercedes S-Class S 560 coupe also more expensive but less powerful maybe a Porsche Panamera Turbo I don't know it's quite difficult actually because it's very powerful but not as expensive as the more powerful competitors so again as with the old 8 series in the 1980s and 90s BMW have sort of created this car that stands on itself it is it is very hard to compare it to something else and it offers a great deal of value for the money I mean I'm actually quite blown away with this car I mean it looks the part it goes the part it feels really luxurious it feels really sporty it's just difficult to compare it to something because this car is so quick already but there's also an M8 coming and thanks to uh, someone with a very big balls and a phone we also know that an M8 competition is coming so there was this this M8 competition was in the Netherlands to be shown to dealers uh, and people at BMW the Netherlands and someone took a picture of that M8 competition before we even knew that it was coming so 
we know that that is coming with like 650 horsepower which is totally insane i mean where does it go from here this is already so impressive this is already so fast i mean i can't wait to drive a tuned version of this you know with the limiter taken off i can't wait to drive the m8 i can't wait to drive the m8 competition this is if you ask me one of the most desirable cars you can get right now definitely that bmw maybe altogether i actually thought that this was going to feel like an m550i with two doors cut off because that's what this car is mostly based on the 5 series but it feels like much more than that and i actually prefer the drivetrain and the sound and the, the steering feel i prefer this car in that respect over an m5 which i really 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 didn't expect it really surprised me and that's i i really like that i really like to be surprised because it, it's not that common anymore so i think that's enough <laughs> i'm going to let you go now uh, i hope you enjoyed this video you can subscribe by clicking the big button you can check out this pov review of a lexus lc 500 you can check out this pov reviews playlist in there is also the bentley pov review so make sure you check that out as well and you can follow us on social media all right thanks guys see you at the next one bye